Sorry, I've been a bit, oh, a lot MIA recently. Um, just had a lot going on. Um, but we're going to try something just a little bit different to what I've been doing. Uh, as you know, the World Cup has started and been brilliant so far. And we're in the quarterfinal stage. So what I've decided to do is combine two of my loves, one being rugby, obviously, um, but the other one being makeup. And I thought I'd do some tutorials on how to support your team if they don't have the colours like I do here. It's a onesie and it's awesome. Um, yeah, just to sort of um, support your team through doing what we're wearing the wall paint. So um, something that I thought about doing before the World Cup started, um, but just got a bit lazy. Um, yeah, the YouTube tutorial does take a lot of work as I've discovered recently. So yeah, hopefully you enjoy it. So I'll be concentrating on the eight teams still left in the World Cup which are Australia, Argentina, France, New Zealand, South Africa, Wales and Ireland. So I hope you enjoy what's about to come. And yeah, so take a look. Hope you get something out of it and enjoy. All right, let's get started. Well, I'm obviously starting with Australia, uh, the Wallabies being my, my boys. Um, so bit of the inspiration behind um, the looks that are coming your way. I thought about the flags of the different countries, the colours that the guys wear, um, sometimes the combination of, of the two, and um, sometimes it's completely from left field because some of the, um, there's only so many colours in a flag and there's also so many things you can do with the colours that they wear as well. Um, so some, a couple of the ones that have got coming up are a little bit out of left field, but um, yeah, just a little bit different, but it, it, you, you'll kind of get it. Um, so f the inspiration for this one is um, basically what a lot of people think Australia is about, which is sun, surf, sand. Um, so I thought maybe just do a, a bronzed Aussie look. So here we go. Now, I've started with, um, I should also preface this by saying, I am in no, no way um, sponsored by any of the company's products that I'm about to use, although that would be ace in the future. Um, but I just use a lot of this um, MAC product, so that's what I'll be using in the tutorial. Um, so I started off with the MAC Prep and Prime. Um, prime my skin up um, and, yeah, basically just to smooth everything out. And so next, what I'm going to do is foundation and just a few couple of squirts in my hand. That's foundation brush. Um, yeah, it's been um been awesome to watch the World Cup so far. What I like to do is start with the centre of the face and blend out. Just get a nice, I'm a bit of a foundation fiend. I, am, I like a really flawless base. So. A bit of the, um, the inspiration behind these was, um, I know personally from Twitter, is that there are a lot of female rugby fans out there. And I just sort of wanted to represent my girls. And some guys, if you're if you're a guy and you wore makeup and you wanted to sort of do this, that's all good. Um, but yeah, I just thought it might be a little bit of fun. Talk about the countries and the teams that are still left, and talk about the World Cup as well, which has been fantastic, as I mentioned before. Completely destroying my sleep patterns, but it's been worth it so far because the wallabies have been amazing. But in a way now, it, the cup, the, um, the tournament starts again, so um, hopefully we can come up with the goods against Scotland on the weekend. Because um, they've beaten us two out of the three times that we've last played them, so on paper we should be able to beat them, but you just never know when it's a knockout. 
when it comes to the knockout stages of this competition, it's a whole new ball game and um, you can't rest on your laurels, as they say. So just take it foundation. I like to take it down the neck um, just so that you haven't got that line. And I hardly ever do because I don't wear foundation that is like 10 shades too dark for me. You know what I mean. We've all seen them. Just keep doing that until you build up the coverage that you like to do. Whatever your personal preference is, really. Like I said before, I like a really flawless, flawless face. Um, you've probably, <laughs> probably seen that on my um, previous YouTube videos. Posts. I keep saying videos. Video sounds like freaking VHS kind of 90s vibe. For all the kids out there, go Google it. <laughs> Back onto the rugby a little bit. Um, I think it's been a really amazing how the Wallabies have played so far. Um, I think all of us Wallaby supporters, they've made us immensely proud of what they've achieved. Um, some people might say, okay, they haven't really achieved anything yet. Kind of like in tennis, you know, um, they always say you can't win a, gr a Grand Slam in the first week of a tennis of a tournament, but you can lose it. In a way, I guess it's a little bit true that, you know, you haven't really won anything yet, but um, I think it's made a lot of the other, we did it in a, in a good way. We kind of were <laughs> the thief in the night, if you like. Um, sneaking up and surprising a lot of people because I don't think outside of Australia that a lot of people were taking the wallabies seriously. I don't even think some people in Australia were taking us very seriously to be honest. Um, but you know that game against England just everyone was like whoa including myself. I really obviously wanted them to win. Um, but I wasn't. And I really, really hoped that they would. Um, but to beat them, I think it ended up being 20 points in the end. I was that shocked me because I was like, oh, go fellas. Probably the Uruguay game was the one that frustrated me the most so far. Um, okay, yeah, we put 60 points on the board, but I don't know, it just seemed like a few, they were just a little bit too eager beaver, white line beaver kind of thing. And they, um, yeah, were too kind of like grabby hands kind of, wanted to, was scoring the tries in their head long before they actually got the ball. Um, and that kind of felt like a hollow victory in a way, but, you know, got some of the guys out there that haven't, will probably not play again this tournament. Um, but this, yeah, the standout players for me so far for the Wallabies have been um, Bernard Foley has been amazing. Um, I know people have doubted him, but um, I just knew that he had this um, quality in him that he just needed to get some more 
um, game, not game time, but more um, experience and uh, just work on things a little bit and become good. Then he has confidence. I mean, his kicking's been amazing, and that's what I've said previously in my build up to the World Cup is that um, goal kicking is going to be the most important thing at this World Cup. And um, he's kicking at 89%. He's kicking. He's second after Dan Bigger from Wales, and Dan Bigger's only missed one shot of goal so far. I think it's like 15 out of 16. Um, and he is actually kicking at a higher percentage than Daniel Carter, if you would believe that. So go with that. Um, so what I'm doing now is I just squeezed a little bit of concealer onto my hand. Um, oh, I forgot to say, my foundation that I used before was MAC Studio Fix Fluid. I use NW40. Um, sometimes in the summer I'll mix it. I've got another one actually. That I've, um, It's a pro long wear different formula, but it's the same colour. It's just a little bit darker because the the colours can vary, even though it's the same shade, the colours can vary between um, the different types of foundations. Um, so that's a little bit darker, so probably in the summer I'll be mixing the two together to get that um, darker colour. Um, so yeah, so just squeeze a little bit of um, concealer onto my hand. And I use MAC again, um, Studio, sorry, Select Cover Up in NC45. Um, NW and NC just basically means NW is neutral warm and um, NC is neutral cool, but for some reason the cools are yellow based in MAC and the warms are pink based. I'm not quite sure why that is, even though I did used to work for them and probably should. Um, so I'm taking, it's meant to be an eye, um, an eyeshadow brush, but I like to use it to apply my concealer. So what I do is, so what I do is, nice triangle underneath the eye. Make sure you get close to your lash line. Again on the other side. Feels weird talking rugby and makeup in the same <laughs> in the same video, but that's me. Like I said, it's two of my favourite things in life. And the corners of the eye, slightly over the eyelid. It just knocks back any redness if you have redness on your eyelid. And that's why the um, the NCs are so good as concealers because they tend to um, just knock the the colour out. Like if you've got redness or bags or anything under the eyes. And for me anyway, for me personally, um, just go and conceal where you need to and that's something that I think we tend to make a bit of a mistake on is we put concealer like, all over our faces and we don't need to. So I'm do a little bit more of that. So that's why you put your foundation on first. And then you've got a clean slate to work with. And then if any areas pop up after that, that's when you go in and you say, okay, I need concealing under my eyes or I need concealing on my eyelids or little blemishes that pop up through my foundation. So it's a nice little nice little guide um, and supporting around the nose. Yeah. Squeeze 
use too much of that product into my environment. And now I'm going to have to put some back. A bit overzealous with the concealer there. It's all these bloody late nights that the Wallabies have me staying up for. Coffee has become my new best friend. So now I'm going to take, this is meant to be a blender brush for eyeshadow as well, but um, I find it's beautiful at concealing, um, to blend in concealer. So just go in and do that. This is you don't want any harsh lines on anything. And that's one of the big differences, I think, product and if you have, you can have the most amazing products that you use, but if you have crap brushes, it kind of counteracts the product that you have. So just make sure that it's all nicely blended in. do this as well. I go in with my powder brush and take it up here. Make sure that again you don't have lines on I just want everything to blend in and look uniform and like it's meant to meant to be there. I just dropped my lashes on the floor one minute. <laughs> um so yeah just make sure that everything is yeah clean and you don't want any harsh lines, you just want, you want people to say, oh yeah, your makeup looks good, but your skin looks amazing, and, and that sort of thing, so, cool. Next, brows, 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 I've got my little brow brush here, I'll just comb my brow down. Now, I've got an Ardell or Ardell brow kit and it's powder. I just I like powders because they are a lot more um, a lot softer. I have used wax pencils before that are quite good as well. Max got a really good um, pencil that you can wax pencil that you can use. Um, so you just comb them down and then I go in with the dark color. It's got, it had four in there, but I smashed that one. Um, so those two, I mix the two together because I've got quite dark hair naturally, even though it is a bit lighter now. Um, and um, depending on the look that I want to go for, sometimes I'll, I'll mix a bit of the, the lighter because that was a lighter brown up there. And that's the bright highlight, which will come in after I put my eyeshadow on. So you just go ahead. I'm going to use the mirror for this because it's a bit far away. I don't want you, <laughs> for your sake, I don't want to get too close. Um, so you just follow your natural brow. Just a little bit black in there. And then sort of zig back and forth in between. So again, you don't have any gaps. And just really light, light strokes. Once I even it up, it should be okay.
been really, really entertained by this um, World Cup so far. There have been some amazing stories come out of it. Like, obviously, the I think the one people will talk about for a long, long time is obviously Japan beating South Africa. Um, I, for some reason, um, I think it was because it was the first week weekend of the tournament and I wanted to sort of watch the games involving the bigger teams so I um me the non-South African Springbok supporter stayed up while my dad the actual Springbok supporter moseyed off to bed thinking oh yeah we got this um but I was sitting there and I was watching it and I was like what the hell is happening here? Um, and yeah, I witnessed history, basically, um, which was really cool. Like, I'm just sitting there going, I can't believe it's happening. So that's just one of, one of the um, stories to come out. And, um, then you've got the way the Wallabies have played, and um, then you've got, like, Romania beating Canada um, last week. Like, that was the biggest... World Cup comeback, um, and just yeah, I think I, I tweeted last night that I'm hoping that someone out there is writing the script for RWC 2015, um, the movie, because there's so many great stories to come out of this. That's what I think anyway. Yeah. Okay, so now this is a wax pencil, and this came with my brow kit. So um, this is again just to smooth everything down. So you you go through again. This is like again you've got a you have a wax pencil. You won't obviously need this because you've got it inbuilt. Um, and then you've got round round gels as well that just settle everything down. You can get um, clear ones, and you can get um, like darker color ones with round gels. They come in like a mascara wand application so you can sort of, same sort of principle, you you run it back and forth into your, your brows. So that is hopefully the brow game is now on fleek. Um, Sounds a little naff, but it's funny. Okay, so um, I always kind of I do a, a pre-highlight. I don't know this is just something that I personally do. You don't need to. And this is um, it's an eyeshadow and it's gold because I like gold. Um, it is a body shop quad quad cubes. Now these are brilliant as well because there is. There was a lighter base colour in here, which is like a pinky metallic colour, which I used I used ages ago because I always use those sorts of colours for my base colour. Um, it's got like a taupey colour and a darker brown, and they're brilliant because they're um, I you can use them like this, like I'm about to do, just to highlight underneath the eyes and around the cheekbone. I'm using like a fan brush here. That's not really good, is it? Um, <laughs> oops. So just higher planes of the face around. And I kind of do an eight, a figure eight around my eyes. So it's on my base highlight. But yeah, you can use them as eyeshadows. Um, if you're e if you're careful enough with the product application, you can use the brown and mix the probably the gold colour together, which is that one there. Um, you could use them as a bronzer, but you have to be very careful because the brown is quite dark. Um, so that's that stage. Um, so yeah, now. I'm using, I found these, 
need, I need to, now any of you make, makeup junkies out there will know that they are of the Urban Decay Naked palettes. And these are kind of the cheap Kmart version of them. Um, so, and they've got some great little colours in there. I mean, the pigment isn't as strong, but I mean, who cares really? They're good. So I'm using the number two, and you can see that they are. Ah, hello, <laughs> hello. Um. Anyway, they there's there's twelve colours in here. So and I mean some of the colours I will never use, but there are the colours that I use all the time, like this one here called Flat. So again, this is a really nice base colour. I just remembered something. It's all good. I'll do that at the end. Over the lid and up to your brow bone. And the thing with colours like these, you can use them wet or dry. So dry, it looks good, and then if you use them wet, it gives like a nice sheen to it. I cannot believe, because I do this every day, I forgot to powder. I powder my face to set your foundation and your concealer. Again, MAC Studio Care Blend Pressed. I don't like a really heavy powder. I've got naturally oily skin, um, and I don't like to feel like there's too much going on in terms of powder. Um, just, it's personal preference, really. So just go all over with that. Usually I would... Press some powder into my onto my eyelids as well, because the powder has um, it makes your eyeshadow last a bit longer. I'll just forget that I forgot that. Right, back to regular programming. So now I showed you the bright, the brow highlight before. Again, I'll show you that one there. And it's got a little brow highlight brush in here. So then you just go ahead and you dip that under there. Sorry if I, I'm flicking. I said before, it's kind of weird talking rugby and trying to do a makeup tutorial in the, at the same time. But um, yeah, so it just gives a little bit more definition underneath the brow. Right. Cool. All right. So now. The fun begins. So we've laid down our base color. Now I'm going to go in. This is an old Chanel. It's kind of a trio of colours. Now the top bit with the black is used to have this beautiful embossed print on it and it had gold flicks through it. Chanel's, they're um, like limited edition packaging and stuff is like, it's really beautiful. So, um, but this is something that I should have thrown out ages ago. <laughs> but that's what we do, we hang on to shit. Um, stuff. So going in with the dark black, it's a terracotta um, colour at the bottom. You just press, this is a firmer um, MAC brush for eyeshadow application. Um, so I just like to press the colour 
pull it into my eyelids. So this is where the bronzing, bronzed Aussie kind of deal comes into it. It's almost throwing a bit of pink there, but I'm going to use that brown that I had in the Body Shop um, quad before. I'm going to mix it with that. Uh, I'll let you know right now that I am not a qualified makeup artist or anything like that and my application techniques might be very different to someone that you've seen who's you know qualified and have the piece of paper to say that they they do makeup good that is not me this is just how I apply and it works for me if you have different techniques then that's cool um, again in makeup and fashion they're very subjective so however if you're a makeup novice I am always too happy to help if you need help with applying and techniques and all that sort of stuff so you can see that I might just take that up a little bit more basically all my makeup training just comes from personal trial and error and working at cosmetic counters so um words so <laughs> So now I'm just going to blend that out a little bit. Just to soften it a little. And I'm going to go take a little bit of that brown colour. Tap the excess off, especially on a dark colour, because you don't want any fallout on your foundation. Some makeup artists will tell you to do your eyes first and then apply your um, foundation after. I don't, I don't like that. I just, I, cl I clean up after. But you know, if you do that, it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna blend the two together. And I'm using the blender brush for this just because I want a soft, I don't want too much of the brown to overtake. I want I want it to be a nice blend of the two colours, so having things on. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. It's nice and soft. It's probably actually better than I do it normally, which is good. Good for camera. So, I like to go. Um, I'm going to use my angle brush for this. Where did we find it? Come on. I'm going to use the same brush that I used to apply this colour with. I'm going to go underneath the eye and just smoke that out a little bit. So 
because I still had some reserved product on there anyway. Let's do that funny thing with my mouth on. One of my favorite brushes to use, my little angle brush, and I'm going to take the brown again. Again, remember to tap that as well, and just fill in. On the same on the other side. I apologize for the background noise, but it's my fan. It's only my one true fan. Um, no, it's an actual fan, like an electric one. Um, <laughs> it is only start of October or nearly mid-October I should say in Brisbane and it has decided to be hot as balls basically for want of a better term which is fantastic because I'm sitting here in a wallabies onesie in my bathroom and it's lined with fleece um, so yeah it, it's a very good look anyway so now we've done that so you can see it's a nice little bronzy kind of look. Now we go in, and this is something that I just cannot live without. Um, it's a Maybelline Eye Studio Black Gel Liner. It's really, really good. Um, it's almost as good as the MAC Fluid Liner that I use, and it's the the MAC one is in the same a similar container, um, and um, applied the same, exactly the same. So I know people have issues with applying liquid or gel liner. So what I'm going to show you is angle brush. A little angle brush like this is going to be your best friend. And what you do is you get as close to your lash line as possible. Start in the middle. Work your way out. Sometimes I like to reverse the brush so you've got the outside point over here. And then you go from the inside again and you meet the line in the middle. reason I love an angle brush, well, it's the only real way that you're going to um, apply a gel liner, but you just have so much more control over your product when you're using it. I'm not a massive fan of liquid liner, I have to say, after using this. So then you just go and do the same on the other eye. It just takes practice, you know. And you've got to consider eye shape as well. Admittedly, my eyes are quite easy to line because I've got like almond shaped eyes. Um, so just, just Google or YouTube it. You can find all sorts of stuff on YouTube. Um, because it's very different to line a round eye or like a hooded eye or um, 
any different eye shapes and the technique for lining your eyes is going to be different. So just take that into consideration as well. So what I like to do after that is using the, the point that bit up there. Um, and just take the excess product and sort of close to the lash line. do that. Okay. Almost there. Now, next. Lashes. My favourite. Up until about three years ago, I just used to use mascara and be done with it. Um, but one day, I uh, was working at a um, makeup counter at a, um, a David Jones, which is a department store here in Australia. Um, and the girl in the makeup counter next to me, they, they had beautiful lashes. And her name's Nicole as well. So I was like, Nicole, hook me up. So um, she applied these lashes on me. Not the ones I'm using right now, but um, she applied, applied false lashes on me. And I, um, I've been in love with them ever since, and now I always wear them. Um, so what you need to do, um, mine are looking a little bit ratchet, so don't judge me. But they are, these ones, Glam Manicure, these are, They've got all ones that are named after um, supermodels. Clearly, I'm not one of them. But this one, these are called Giselle. And they've got, um, and they're named after Victoria's Secret Angel, I think, and then they've got um, a couple of celebrities as well. I just like these because of the, um, because they're quite feathered. Um, they're a little bit more. They're a little bit dramatic, but not like drag queen kind of dramatic. No disrespect. So what you do is, and I like strip lashes because I find that they are a lot easier to apply for me personally. I have tried individual lashes. They just become too finicky for me. And um, basically lashes are just trial and error. Um, I remember I bought some for my 21st and um, I had no idea what I was doing basically and they were just awful. So I scrapped that idea. You get these sorts of ones and then you also get the ones that have got like little gaps in between them which are really nice. And I like to also layer two um, sets on top of each other. Um, Napoleon has some really good fake lashes. Um, and what I do if they get a little bit gunky on the ends, I just take a makeup wipe and either, or um, a makeup wipe or baby oil, and I just let them sit in there, um, or I'll let I'll squeeze some baby oil on them and just let them rest in there. Just be careful because they can go a little bit. It's okay. You put the glue on the band, shake it around a little bit. And I like to have my mirror in front of my face so that I I can see where exactly to put it. And sometimes I also have it underneath my chin as well. So I'll do that now because it's going to look a bit better. Try to make sure that you don't get any glue on your fingers, even though your lashes will stick to your fingers. Just make sure you get as close to your lash line as possible. Because again, you want to keep people guessing as to whether you're wearing falsies or not. You don't want it to be too obvious. I 
I'll do that as well. I'll go like to the side um, just to make sure that they're sitting on my lash, my actual lashes properly. And I've got my trusty Manicare tweezers and just push them against. Just try also to make sure that you don't poke yourself in your eyeball because that's no fun. Um, more tips on fake, fake lashes. Sometimes they don't um, conform to your eye shape, so you have to sometimes measure them and cut them. Uh, it's your choice. If they're really, really long, um, as in the width, if they're too wide for your, your eye, then I would recommend cutting them. I've, I've never really had that problem, I, can't, I can say. I just I kind of just bend mine into my eye shape. So repeat on the other side. When I was in the States a few years ago, I um, I bought an actual eyelash, an eyelash applicator, but I don't use it. I just use my trusty what are they called? Tweezers. That took a while. They're sitting, sitting pretty cool. All right, Dunsky for the lashes anyway. Yeah, I'll show you what I mean. It's this little contraption. I got a bit carried away in Sephora, which is really, really easy to do. So you see they're curved and you're meant to like stick your lash in there and then like that. Ain't nobody got time for that. I just use my tweezers now. So now I put mascara on. This is a Revlon one. And again, I'll hold a little mirror. I usually have my handheld blue one, which is a bit too big, but um, I'll hold it underneath. And try and just get my natural lashes. Again, just to blend in. Because my, my natural lashes, they're not black, they're like a really, really dark brown. Um, so you can kind of see them coming through. Swirl, don't pump, you'll put air into your mascara and it gets dry and crusty. Eyes are nearly done. Um, black liner. Now, this eyeliner, it's called Starlet, 
and no joke, it's about five dollars at the supermarket. I think they sell it at Kmart as well. It is one of the best eyeliners I've ever used, and I've used MAC. Clearly, I've used a lot of MAC stuff. Um, so I'm just going to line inside the rim of my eyes. Now I can do this without blinking. And I go in and around here as well. I know it takes a lot of practice. Um, and yeah, it kind of looks a bit weird, but I know a lot of women don't do this. They skip it, or they just don't think it's necessary. But a liner is my thing. <laughs> Michael Liner. <laughs> um, right, moving right along. Um, so that's eyes nearly done. It's one little thing. Taking the base colour that I used and dotting a little bit of that into the inside corner just to brighten the eye area up. So that's like a little, that's a MAC brush as well. Now, the actual bronzer. Now, this is a brand called W7, and I got from um, Chemist Warehouse, and it was dirt cheap. Um, and I find it very hard to find a bronzer that actually does what it says for me, because um, I'm just going to sit back a little bit just to... No, that doesn't work either. Um, yeah, it doesn't really, some of the bronze, bronzers don't really show up on my skin. So this one I found does. So I like to go on my cheekbones. I think I might move this in a minute just to show the finished product because it's getting a bit shadowy. Just around the face, just a little bit of the excess product. looking in my mirror here. And last for the face, I have got this NYX. I think it's NYX, not NYX, but it they have some brilliant products. Um, this is an illuminator and it's like a pinky gold colour. It's very, it's really similar to um, a NARS product. Um, so again, where I put the highlighter the first time, but I had to go with my powder before it, because I forgot. Just around cheekbones, down the nose, cupid's bow, cheek, because I haven't got any colour on my cheeks at the moment, so. and I love me some highlighter. Again, around eight bigger. And 
Now the lip, I'm going to use, this is a designer brand. Colour is Baby Rose. Line all your lips and colour them in. Gives your um, lip products a lot more longevity. Color I'm using on my lip gloss is Viva Glam 6 um, and it's a MAC one as well. It's a MAC lip gloss. Anyway, it's good. Like I said, I'm just going to show you. Beautiful bronzed Aussie look, complete with <laughs> more Wallabies onesie. I'm just going to put my hood up just to make sure that I'm wrapping my boys properly. <laughs> Alright, if you want to recreate the look, please do and please show me. Um, tag me at Queen Rugby on Instagram using the hashtag stronger as one which is the Wallabies hashtag for the World Cup um, and thank you for watching and join me next time for the next one that I'll do bye